Overtime! This week for the Overtime Arcade Private Members Only Discord Weekly High Score Tournament, we're playing Robotron 2084. And I thought this would be a great opportunity, much like we did a couple weeks ago with Donkey Kong, to go back in time, hop in a time machine, and kind of do a bit of a retrospective of the restoration project that I did on my own Robotron cabinet from back before I even started this YouTube channel. So yeah, going back, <laughs> this is now a couple of years ago, you know, Robotron has always been a really, you know, one of my one of my favorite games. I had wanted one of these for a while. This ended up being one of the first 10 games that I picked up way back when. And uh, yeah, I had been looking for one for a while. I ended up picking this up uh, about a month after I got the, the Donkey Kong. Um, you know, I had just been checking everywhere, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and, and everywhere, just over and over and over again, you know, looking for a project to restore. And eventually one day, you know, this, this listing popped up. Uh, it was about, uh, you know, 200 miles away from me, kind of on the Jersey shore, not too far away from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, and the listing just said Robotron full-size arcade machine. Uh, and it looked like this thing was sitting in a barn. <laughs> That's what the images were. But it looked like a complete cabinet, really didn't have any information about it. Uh, like I said, looked like it'd been sitting in a barn or a warehouse or something for years. You know, everything looked intact. It had the monitor, all of the artwork. You know, maybe the side was a bit, you know, the, the, the side's a bit scratched up or whatever. And, you know, maybe a little bit of rust and, and patina here and there. But, you know, all in all, looked pretty, pretty good. Missing the upper back door, but that's pretty common with, with uh, Williams machines. You know, this was the first ever Williams cabinet that, that I owned. Owned, but you know, one of the things that I learned is this sort of you know generation of Williams cabinets and Williams cabinets. Let me tell you, are very well made. They have this two-part back door where the lower part is on a hinge that opens up, and the the, the game PCB, uh, the multi-board you know sort of uh, uh, board set is kind of mounted on the the inside of that lower back door, and the upper back door just sort of like when you unlock it, it kind of falls out with this sort of rabbit uh, joint and those upper back doors are always missing, but whatever. So this looked pretty good and, and I, you know, it was the, the best uh, deal that I'd seen in, in quite a while. So I was very interested, immediately reached out to the seller as soon as I, I saw it. And uh, I think I might've gotten trapped in a, a bit of a bidding war. You know, the original uh, price that the seller was asking for was extremely, extremely reasonable. And, uh, you know, we went back and forth a little bit and, um, you know, they were pretty open about you know that there were other people interested in the in the game that were offering them more but I guess maybe I was the first person to reach out so we kind of went back and forth a little bit and, and eventually I I won out uh, I don't want to say how much I spent on this it was definitely less than a thousand dollars there's really only been uh, you know and I own what is it now 30 um I own 37 games and I've only spent more than $400 three times and this was one of them. It's actually the most I've ever spent uh, on a game. Uh, but again, this was very early in my collecting experience, my, my sort of journey in this hobby and I didn't know uh, necessarily any better. But at least this wasn't a deconversion project, right? It was complete, a nice survivor. And uh, yeah, uh, it was sold as non-working. So I, I knew I had some sort of work cut out for me. But uh, yeah, so made the trip out to New Jersey, really not too bad at all, just a few hours. The story that I got from the seller was, uh, it was a husband and wife team. They had owned and operated an arcade on the Jersey Shore back in the day in the heyday in the early 80s. And eventually it went out of business. And when they closed it, they sold off all of their games at the time, except for they kept one and they kept Robotron because that was their favorite. Flash forward, you know, decades in the future, they now own basically a nursery, uh, 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 you know, on the Jersey Shore selling whatever, you know, outdoor furniture and plants and stuff. And this had been sitting in their warehouse in the, basically a shed at their at their garden store for, you know, 20 plus years, just completely untouched. Got it loaded up uh, on the truck. Uh, here I am sort of uh, making a pit stop at a Wawa. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wawa, great sort of, you know, chain of gas stations, good food, really good food for a gas station. Uh, this is my old pickup truck, the one I had uh, before. I've got the huge, you know, Ram 1500 now. This is a, a smaller pickup truck that I had, but still did the job, you know, good, good for moving uh, arcade machines. 
And yeah, when I got it home, sort of took a quick look at what was going on. Um, you know, it's all there, right? Uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the joysticks and the bezel and, and, and everything, you know, it, it's all there. One of the things that really kind of immediately popped out to me was there's something weird about this control panel overlay, right? So if you look at this thing really closely, you'll notice that there, there's some stuff that's missing, right? Uh, first of all, it's missing the sort of 2084 that's supposed to be right on the, the front of the control panel. And so I did a little research and, and, you know, I was thinking maybe this is a Willis control panel overlay. So Willis was a company back in the day that produced reproduction, you know, CPOs, replacement CPOs uh, for operators and arcade owners uh, that, you know, weren't exactly the same as the original, sort of just a relatively cheap replacement. Uh, people sometimes actually collect those uh, nowadays. This stuff Definitely wasn't a Wico though, or a Willis uh, a, a CPO because the Willis CPO for Robotron looks different. I did some research online and I found a couple of other examples of cabinets that had this same uh, CPO that was missing the 2084 uh, markings on the front. And I, I kind of figured, you know, and, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think this was just a, a manufacturing error. I don't know if they missed one of the, the, the screens or the, the printing was messed up. You know, there's a couple other elements on the control panel that are missing, like some of the, the copyright markings and whatnot. But hey, interesting little thing and, and makes my cabinet somewhat unique. I, I looked again closely at uh, the control panel thinking, you know, was this maybe applied, this, this weird CPO applied on top of an old one? But looking closely on the side profile, it doesn't look like there's a second CPO underneath and again looking closely this is a high quality CPO it doesn't look like a you know it doesn't look like it was uh, you know a cheap copy or anything like that and it's got the sort of uh, patina on it that's consistent with the rest of the cabinet so yeah I, I'm again I'm, I'm thinking this is some kind of you know manufacturing printer error from back in the day and this is original to the cabinet so inspecting everything one of the things that really sort of I noted uh, very quickly was we've got some problems with the power supply PCB so uh, I saw some, you know, wiring that didn't look right. I flipped it, you know, removed the, uh, the, uh, the, the power supply PCB, flipped it over on the backside. And some of the wires that go to the power supply PCB were just soldered onto the back of the board, right? So this looks like some crazy sort of field repair that a, an operator did back in the day, you know, just to get the game working, get it back into service. And we can see the reason that they did this was one of the, one of the connectors on the harness just was burnt to all heck. Like you can just see this thing was charred. They ended up cutting off the part that was burnt. Uh, ripping those wires off and just soldering them directly uh, onto the back of the board so that you know we we're gonna have to fix that and you know have some work cut out for us there um, you know as is very typical with with many arcade machines the grounding plug on the that the power plug was removed and you can see a little bit of the the casing removed there uh, stripped off exposing some some bare copper uh, on the power cord so that was something we were gonna have to replace but you know all in all I was really really happy with this pickup maybe I over paid a little bit but again I was really excited to not have a deconversion project right just a restoration and 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 not a crazy deconversion where I have to source all the parts to put this cabinet back together and really you know just some cosmetic stuff that I was probably just gonna live with right a little bit of rust here and there some surface rust I should probably repaint that lower coin door at one at some point uh, you know some scrapes and scratches on the uh, the original you know stenciled side art I could maybe touch that up if I really wanted to but I think I, you know I I, I convinced myself back then just live with that patina, embrace the patina. You know, starting to take everything apart, digging into the back of the cabinet. I, re I actually had removed uh, uh, the boards that were on mounted on the inside of the lower uh, uh, back door. I took them out of the cabinet for transport when I, I brought the game home, just to keep everything safe and keep it from bouncing around. Uh, this. Uh, a monitor here is a uh, Wells Gardner K4900, actually the first K4900 that I ever owned and ever worked on. You know, we see what's going on here with the transformer assembly and the power supply PCB and the soundboard. Again, everything intact, everything original. Uh, the other side of the cabinet actually looks a little bit better than the, the side that you've seen a couple of times now already. So uh, maybe you can understand now why I didn't want to redo or, or touch up even uh, the side art because the stencils still look pretty good in my opinion. You know, we've got some flaking on the uh, the bezel. This is pretty common. So this is a glass bezel that has, uh, you know, silk screen uh, uh, on the inside. There's like paint on the inside for the artwork. And because, you know, glass and that paint would 
you know, it, especially being out in the elements as the temperatures would change, uh, they would expand and contract at different, uh, um, you know, ratios. And eventually the paint would start flaking off. So this is a very common thing. So that would be something we'd have to address at some point. And yeah, so started to dig into the monitor. The monitor was dead when I got it. Again, a 19K 4901. You know, did the same process that I always do. You've seen me do this in videos. I even did a short video dedicated about it, sort of how I wash uh, monitors. And, and it's not gonna hurt it. If you do it the right way, everything will go fine. So I got a re uh, replacement power cord actually from Home Depot. So believe it or not, this power cord is the original uh, from the, uh, the, the cabinet. This is exactly what uh, Williams used back in the day for these, uh, these cabinets. If you look really closely, you know, it's, it looks just like a lamp cord, right? Like a brown three wire, you know, flat uh, of cord. And it's got all these weird sort of ways it twists uh, into the transformer assembly. And I, brought, I bought a brand new one, cleaned up the uh, transformer assembly really, really well. And I tried as closely as possible to recreate the sort of knot that they tied uh, into it. And I think all in all it came out pretty well and, and looks pretty nice. Uh, so this is a D8784 power supply board. Uh, and I installed a complete rebuild kit and cap kit from arcadepartsrepair.com, uh, plus a few other new parts. Everything went together pretty well, but there were a couple other things that I kind of noticed when I, when I did this. C14 in particular had a really, really bad cold solder joint on the, on the negative lead. As you can kind of see right here, that, that thing is basically not connected at all. So that obviously was going to, uh, going to cause some problems. The next thing I turned my attention to was the bezel. I want to address, I wanted to address the flaking of the, the, the paint, the printing that was coming off. Really what I did was, uh, you can see I, I used a uh, painter's tape to kind of, you know, uh, mark off the, uh, the open part of the, of the bezel where the, you know, the sort of game, you know, the monitor screen comes through. And then I sprayed on uh, triple thick, which is basically like an acrylic protective spray. Uh, I guess this is done pretty frequently in the uh, the pinball hobby as well to sort of preserve and repair back glass. I can always go back and try to touch up uh, the paint. I can paint over the triple thick uh, with you know matching the paint color and everything, but everything came out looking good. And it doesn't look any better than it was, but at least that flaking isn't gonna get any worse. Um, so then I went and uh, recapped the K4900. I also replaced, you know, I probably did too much. I replaced the bottle cap transistors, like the, the uh, I guess that was the hot and the, is it the VR is also a bottle cap? Anyway, I replaced the filter cap. Uh, I replaced the axial fuse. Um, you know, again, looking at looking at the, uh, the, the chassis, it looked like the vertical output section probably had some heat. One of the reasons I replaced those, both of those bottle cap transistors is that they were both very, very rusty. And uh, the B plus filter cap uh, had a really uh, a, a partially burnt pad. So um, I couldn't tell if the chassis had been worked on uh, uh, before, but there were a bunch of other like jumpers and mods, as you can see uh, uh, on the other side, I kind of just left them alone. And once I finished all that, I double checked my work, reinstalled the chassis back into the monitor, connected everything back up. And again, I was feeling lucky, so I fired up the machine. And with, again, I've got the game boards disconnected, so it's just the monitor plugged in. Uh, I wanted to see if I could at least get the monitor to come up. And fortunately, uh, I was greeted with some you know, high voltage buzz and neck glow. And uh, once I turned up the screen pot and the flyback just a smidge, I got some really good raster on the tube. So we're making progress here. We've got the marquee light and at least some raster uh, on the monitor. Next, I turned my attention to the soundboard. Uh, I got another cap kit for that one from arcadepartsandrepair.com as well. Uh, that went really, really smoothly. No real problems at all. There were uh, a couple of caps that were bulging, uh, C15 and C26. Uh, C24 had a cold solder joint, but other than that, everything went well. The next thing I did, and, and some people People will tell you that this was overkill, but I, I highly recommend this and I'm glad that I did it. Uh, <laughs> I got into the zone and I spent an afternoon replacing every single insulation displacement connector and corresponding header in this cabinet. Every last one. That's three on the CPU board, three on the ROM board, two on the interface board, four on the sound board, and one on the monitor chassis, uh, in addition to the four that I, I already did with the, the sound board. And so all in all, that's dozens of individual uh, uh, headers. So, you know, removing every single one, replacing them with brand new Trifurcons, uh, uh, the, the square sort of uh, headers and replacing, you know, cutting off all of the, uh, the connectors on the harness and replacing them, you know, wire by wire by wire, crimping on new Trifurcon pins, and uh, just going through all of that, you know, uh, I tested continuity on every single crimp to make sure I did a good job. And again, 
you know, uh, maybe overkill, but I wanted to make sure that nothing in the harness was going to cause a problem, and I didn't wanna have to worry about any of these ever again. Another reason I really went crazy and replaced all of these IDC connectors is some of them had some really bad oxidation. As you can see with this example right here, I have no idea what this was. It was just this green oxidation everywhere and some weird residue, and, and you know. So uh, this was another reason that really uh, motivated me to replace all of these harness connectors. Now, after all that, I decided it was finally time to put everything back together and fully power on this machine for the first time in 20 years, at least allegedly, according to the seller. Um, you know, one of the things that I kind of, the last things that I looked at was uh, with the battery. Now, fortunately, the seller was was smart enough to remove the battery, the batteries from the board before putting this into storage. What happens to so many Williams games is people will leave the the alkaline batteries uh, uh, in the in the the board and they just leak over time and, and really ruin the board. The the acid or alkaline or whatever gets gets in everywhere and eats all the traces. Now, so the that wasn't a problem here. They had removed the batteries before putting it into storage. There's just a little bit of corrosion that I cleaned up with some isopropyl and I just put three brand new uh, lithium batteries into there. I eventually did go back and replace uh, the CMOS with uh, an NVRAM uh, sort of solution, but um, you know, for the for the the first power up, I just had some lithium batteries in there, uh, and this was three o'clock in the morning. I had my fingers really really crossed. Uh, I had the I had my multimeter hooked up to measure voltage uh, uh, from a chip on the CPU board, and so I plugged in the power cord, flipped on the main switch, hit my fingers crossed. And uh, the machine instantly sprang to life with nothing but reassuring sounds. Uh, I saw a, a zero on the segmented display indicating no errors. This is something that Williams games, you know, provide a, an error readout on the board itself. And zero is what you want to see. And down on the multimeter, it said, you know, negative 4.886. It should have been negative uh, uh, 0.5 or whatever. So that was good, right? Just shy of negative 4.9. Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. I walked around to the front of the machine and uh, you know, saw some blurry text. I had to crank the focus knob and, and dial it in a little bit. Uh, but I saw, you know, some great messages, high score table reset, bookkeeping totals cleared. Um, <laughs> it was great. Uh, so I turned it off and turned it back on and it was glorious. I played a quick game and entered my high score, then turned it off and on, uh, turned it off and back on again uh, to make sure it was saved. And yep, uh, it saved my high scores and everything seemed to be working great. So I spent some, uh, uh, you know, I, I went to sleep because it was 3 a.m. But the next day I spent some time dialing the monitor and uh, I called it a night. And then from there, there were some last few things that I took care of, new leg levelers and, and things like that. Uh, I installed some new uh, LED lights to illuminate. Uh, I used LED bulbs to illuminate uh, the, the player one and player two start buttons that were originally meant to be lit by... Um, you know, regular incandescent lights like on a coin door bulb, but they get really dim. So I had really bright LEDs to make those uh, 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 the buttons really pop. And then the last real thing that I did was cut a new back door. So I went on the claw forums and, and found some folks that had you know really measured theirs uh, very precisely. So I cut a two by four sheet of uh, half inch MDF uh, uh, to size. And I cut the rabbit joint uh, with, it was first, my first ever time doing a rabbit joint on my table saw, uh, spray painted it black, drilled and installed a new lock. Uh, and I actually attached an original diagram sheet that I was able to buy off of eBay. And it wasn't perfect, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And so, you know, really that's the end of this restoration project. I am so thrilled with how it came out. You know, some people might've gone further and really done a, a heavier cosmetic restoration. And yeah, at some point it should probably repaint that lower coin door and, and get rid of some of the rust on the upper coin door. But I'm thrilled with it. I love this game. I love playing this game. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy to have this as, as part of my collection. So yeah, I love playing Robotron. Again, one of my favorite games. I'm definitely not the best in the world, but you know, I'm, I'm not even doing that good right here, right now, trying to, you know, put up a high score for the, the members only tournament on our, our Discord. But uh, let me, uh, I've actually got an idea. There's something I want to try that might help me do a little bit better here. Okay, I know it's a poor craftsman who blames his tools, but something I've been meaning to do for a while is uh, change out the original grommets on these uh, joysticks. As you'll see, I really have not rebuilt these joysticks at all. This is everything is original. There's even rusty uh, C-clips on these. So um, <laughs> one thing that I, I hope that might help improve my uh, Robotron play a little bit is if I 
swap out the grommets here, which are the originals, which I'm assuming are probably all worn out and blown out uh, with some replacements. Now there's a couple different places to get them. Uh, Arcade Shop has made some for years, but there are quite a few people who complain that they're way too stiff as compared to the originals. Uh, so I've got a couple right here made by Andrew B uh, on the Kalo V forums, the Clov forums. Um, there was somebody else who made them uh, originally uh, and then Andrew B took over the sort of reproduction process of these. And these are apparently a lot, I can even, you know, I can even manipulate them with my hands, a lot softer uh, than the arcade shop replacements and sort of better recreate kind of what, what the original ones are supposed to uh, sort of feel like. So we're gonna go ahead and hopefully uh, <laughs> replace these right now. So uh, I think I can do this without taking uh, the, entire, the entire joystick apart. And I think I can start by just, well, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> I got the E-clip off, but it sort of went, it went uh, <laughs> who knows where. So there's my joystick and yeah, look how rusty that is. I should probably clean that up a little bit. Oh, look at that. Oh, and the spring here is jacked up. I gotta go see if I have uh, a new one uh, upstairs real quick. Hang on one second, let me go. Uh, Oh, uh, actually, before I do that, let's let's take a look at what the grommets actually look like. And like I said, and that's that often is what happens with those eclipses. They sort of go wherever. All right. So first screw. Don't want to. It'll come out. These are a lot longer than I thought they were. All right, so we're free and clear here, and this thing is just, all right, I gotta remember that the uh, the longer side goes towards me, and there we go. Yeah, so we have a, a plastic washer here, and uh, quite a bit of mess in there. And as you can see, uh, this grommet is really blown out, like it's just torn, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install a new one. I'll kind of clean this up just a little bit. I'll go and I'll look for the uh, the the e clip that I lost somewhere in the cabinet. Good luck uh, finding it, Charlie. I'll replace both of them. I'll put everything back together, and then we'll uh, fire up the game again and see if that helps me play Robotron a little bit better. All right, I installed both of the new reproduction grommets from Andrew B on the Claw forums. Uh, they feel pretty good, uh, just sort of, you know, not too stiff. They feel a little bit better than the uh, the previous ones. And yeah, the 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 fire, the right side uh, joystick uh, was not as bad as the left one, the move one, but uh, definitely still blown out. The, the, the grommet was torn, so I'm glad that I went ahead and did this. And I cleaned it up a little bit. You know, I didn't go too crazy. I didn't sand off the rust or anything, but I cleaned off as much as I can. So why don't we put two more credits on this thing and see if these new grommets uh, help with the uh, gameplay at all. So here we go. All right. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Robotron is definitely, definitely one of my favorite games. You know, to me, it's like the most pure, and I know other people have said this too, like the most pure Twitch, sort of fast reaction, you know, type of, type of thing, right? Other games are about timing, uh, and this is just sort of reacting, you know, managing lots of stuff going on. It definitely gets really, really hectic. And I probably shouldn't even be talking, right? Because I won't be able to focus on, oh, like that, won't be able to focus on what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, that was not a family member right there. That was definitely an enemy. So. I don't think uh, my scores are going to uh, put me in the top again. Oh man, for this tournament that we've been doing on the Overtime Arcade uh, members only Discord, which has been a really a fun thing, this weekly uh, high score tournament we've been doing. I think this is the, what is it? The, uh, oh man, the fourth or fifth week now. Uh, you know, I did, um, Almost thought that was a family member again. Uh, we did Donkey Kong together in a video, and uh, uh, we've done a bunch of others. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. 
Uh, not so great. <laughs> the joysticks feel better though. It's definitely not the joysticks that are uh, doing that. And uh, yeah, and I've been putting in CG as my initials here just because I didn't wipe the, um, the high score table uh, uh, when I changed the, uh, the settings because I usually have Robotron set to um, Twin Galaxies uh, marathon settings where you can earn more lives, you know, every however many, you know, 40,000 points or something like that. For the tournament, we're playing by uh, Twin Galaxies tournament settings, not marathon settings, which I think is difficulty uh, number five, five lives and no bonus lives. So you can't earn any additional lives. And yeah, we'll make this, unless I really screw up bad, we'll make this my last playthrough here. Okay, got him. All right. We did also something on one of the uh, uh, members only uh, monthly live streams. I think it was Dell from Dell's Arcade's idea of playing uh, Robotron with the hands backwards, right? So having, rather than having your left hand on the left joystick and your right hand on the right joystick, uh, having your hands swapped, which was definitely uh, a mind bender. Oh man. <laughs> so, yeah, I think my high score on, oh wow, on Robotron playing normally with the, uh, the marathon settings is like 400,000. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna do it, Charlie. <laughs> uh, one day I'd like to hit um, a million points, but that ain't happening today. Certainly not on tournament settings. We can't earn any bonus lives. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm talking. You know, the other, t the other time I've, I've been playing tonight, or in this video, the other times I've been playing, and I did a voiceover later, not talking while I'm trying to play. So I'll blame that for my shoddy performance here. It's hard to focus. It's, there's enough things going on in the game to focus on. Yeah, look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that'll be it for Robotron. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Back, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I guess my, uh, the score I'll be submitting for the tournament is 128,875. Not that great, but yeah, like right there, 409,000 I think is my uh, the max score I've ever gotten. Anyway, <laughs> I think we'll wrap things up here. As always, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, consider becoming a channel member. Consider buying some merch in our, our shop. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> as always, thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.